Hey YouTubers, here's those 862 heads that we took into Nolan Cylinder Head in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, basically what we were doing this time around was taking these 862s, having them opened to a two inch intake valve and maintaining the 155 exhaust. What sucks is the when you go to buy a two inch valve which we now know you can buy knockoffs for a lot cheaper. But when we were looking in the star catalog, we were noticing there's a huge price increase between like the Renegade Pro intake valves. You can buy them for $45 to $47 for eight. 202 intake, same price for a 1.57 exhaust. The problem we were running into is that Nolan's, if you enlarge both of these valves during a valve job, the valve job starts at $295 uh, plus, I'm assuming, because he did not include any R, not like tearing down the heads, putting them back together. He was just saying that the process of doing the valve job and enlarging both of these bowls and seats uh, what took a lot of different steps on his CNC machine he uses so these heads were the valve job was done with a CNC machine the customer stepped up to manly pro flow two inch intake valves factory 155 exhaust that they did reface and I had asked um, you know since you gotta pay for it you might as well ask for the bowl cut percentages that you want. So I asked for the bowl cut on the intake side to be one, one inch 780 thousandths and the bowl cut on the exhaust bowl to be one inch 333 thousandths. Now, with that said, I'm a little bit, I don't know, I think he could have done a little more work towards doing the bowl on that, uh, like where it transitions to the aluminum, if that makes any sense. But I'm gonna move the camera over so I can show you. Uh, I'm gonna try to test those bowl cuts with my templates to show you where they cut it, how far down, and then the work I have to do to finish. Okay guys, I had to kind of reduce the angle of the cylinder head, which did affect my my backlighting or my lighting to be able to see but it's this is the best way i can do it to try to keep my fat hands out of the stupid shot all right so basically when i had dropped when i dropped the heads off i requested them to do bowl cuts of one inch 780 thousandths on the intake and one inch 333 thousandths on the exhaust now i will say this they came close and it doesn't pass the way I hoped it would but perhaps next time I can be more upfront with him on what I expect the bowl cut to be um, had I known it was going to be a slightly smaller than what I normally would set them at because what I was doing was trying to save myself some time as far as um, getting all this finished but let me just throw this out there they did an excellent job on all the different angles of that. See that reflection off that valve stem. They did an excellent job doing their angles on the valve job and they even removed material on the chamber floor to help transition to the valve, or valve seat during the valve job. But what I had asked, I want to show you guys my, my template I have that measures you know exactly what I want it to. It doesn't quite pass like if you guys can see that now it does set pretty low in the valve seat itself but it's like it's like the cutter needed to go deeper or I needed to request probably a 1.79 maybe instead of being a 780 maybe if I had to go went up and said hey I need a 1.790 or now that I know that this basically runs a little small, 
I might even ask them to do that 90% and jump it out to a 1.800 cut so that this template will pass easily. Because if you recall, or I will throw out there, I generally try to stay in the 80, 89%, not more than 90% on my intake bowl cut percentages, because I just don't want to get the seat too thin at, in the head. But now that I see how he's doing his valve job, sorry about that, I'm getting kind of weird with wiggling the valve. But now I see how his uh, CNC machine does this cut, I'm okay with asking him to go all the way out to the 1-800-90% request because what that's going to do is result in an actual bowl that's going to be in that 89 to 90% that'll merge or blend into the aluminum and into the port where we're going to enlarge it. Because at this point, this head has not been ported. It's only had a valve job opened up to the bigger two inch intake valve and had to surface it just enough to get it flat. Because right now we're, we're, we're working around the parameter of having a static compression ratio on that LS1 of around 11.2 to one so that we can run the appropriate Howard's racing camshaft and make it 100% compatible with pump gas. Now I think I can go up as high, I think it was 11.4 to one static compression. And then you run the dynamic compression numbers with that Howard's cam. We're still okay with 92 to 93 octane pump gas. But my goal was to give them a little bit of a cushion when I'm engineering this setup or this combo so that if they got a bad tank of gas or maybe they had some 89 octane or they don't have to worry about detonating or hurting anything. So, you know, just want to throw that out there, why we're doing these heads a certain way and how much we're milling them and all that good stuff. Now, something I didn't like was when I looked at the paperwork for these cylinder heads, they didn't tell me how much they milled off of them, which is fine because I'll be taking that sharp edge off of these chambers and CCing them once I get them finally assembled. But it'd be just kind of nice to know how much they had to take off of them uh, when they surface the heads. That way you kind of got a rough idea what you're looking at when you're doing push rod length. But I digress. The exhaust valve bowl I requested was a, I actually asked for a one inch 333 thousandths but the template I have is just one inch 33, 1.33. I'm kind of tired today and I just wanted to try to get this information out there because I know you guys were watching and waiting for it. So if you'll see, now keep in mind, I use factory exhaust valves when I make the made this template. See how thick it is? So it, it looks like it's not going down in there very far, but it actually is going beyond halfway through the valve seat. So again, had I known that he was going to stop his cut on the valve job prior to a one inch 333 thousandths template, you know, passing the valve seat itself and going completely into the port, I would have requested a slightly larger bowl cut. But now that I know where we're at, I probably should have requested probably a one inch 340 thousandths bowl cut so that this thing would pass that lower area of the valve seat into the port because basically during the porting process everything has to be blended smoothly you know what i mean like right now it's not going to hurt anything because he has if you guys ever read or watch Oh, what's that guy's name? And I know there's a lot of controversy, but his name is David Visard. He now has YouTube videos. Look him up, and he'll explain to you that his name is Visard. But if you look at David Visard's porting uh, theory and porting techniques, he talks about having a, a radius or almost like a, uh, I don't want to say a waterfall, but just think of a, a, a curvature between your valve sealing angle and where it dumps into the port. 
if that makes any sense. He almost wants you to undercut the area between the actual, let's say on this aluminum head, he wants you to slightly undercut the aluminum to the bottom of the seat, creating that kind of like a hump, if for lack of a better term. But he, he talks about in some of his videos where he wants the air to kind of go over like this and fall in going down that transition. I've, that's kind of a different theory for me. So I'm still kind of taking it in and kind of evaluating what the benefit of that would be. And, and it could be related to um, either a dry, or not dry, like either a dry flow or wet flow dynamic, uh, similar to if you think of like a, like an airplane wing. An airplane wing is, is rounded, it has a, a curvature or a profile on the front that creates lift by the way it controls and uh, manages the airflow as it goes around the wing it's not a knife edge or a thin uh, divider, for lack of a better term. It kind of has an engineered shape that helps the airflow or helps build lift and all that. Perhaps David Visor is talking about building this kind of a curvature from the seating angle into the port that somehow helps on a flow bench. I don't know. I've never seen that in my experience, that that would be the preferred way of doing it, but I'm very curious to read more about it and find out what he's talking about. I just had picked it up from one of his YouTube videos that he now posts that you can watch for free. Um, he does do sem seminars still, and I think he still has his books and possibly videos and all that you can purchase. But I just thought some of his information he was giving away for free was pretty interesting. So basically that's where we're at. We've got a pretty good start. You know, I'm gonna enhance this definitely some more because that bowl cut is not big enough to make the power we're wanting or the flow we're wanting. This one, same thing, not quite big enough. It's close, like I can wiggle this around. Oh, sorry. I can wiggle this around in that head and I can feel it, you know what I mean? Like when I go to spin this, I can tell it's almost gonna pass. So that's that's a huge time saver. Plus we've got a quality valve job done on a CNC machine. We've uh, of course flattened this head out because I did a, a, I just used a straight edge and a feeler gauge to check it and it absolutely needed to be needed to be milled and that's, that's expected on a, on a used truck cylinder head, you know. But that's where we're at on our, our current 862 projects where we are going to, or have gone, to the two inch Manly Pro Flow valves, 155 factory exhaust valves. Um, they'll be fully ported with 215 cc intake runners. Probably gonna settle in around an 82 cc exhaust runner. I'm hoping to get those chambers in the round they started at started out a little bit in between some of my other 862 projects because they weren't a full 65 cc they were i think i you'll have to go back and check that video but i think they started out like 63 cc now keep in mind we did surface the head which reduces the combustion chamber volume but we also went to a bigger intake valve which sits down in the chamber and displaces some uh, volume as well. So hopefully those will end up around 62 cc. Even if they maintain 63, we're still in the ballpark of what we were looking for. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys an update because I'm gonna start whittling on these heads uh, either later tonight or tomorrow morning. Uh, it depends on what my family has planned for me that I don't know about. Um, please stay, uh, but stay tuned because these are going on a very uh, specific LS1 build, going for that magical 500 rear wheel horsepower. And I wanted to kind of share some of my logic and theory and part selection as to wh why I led him down this direction and how we plan to get that power. So thanks again for watching uh, Headflow Inc. Please uh, like, subscribe and share. Please uh, hit the little bell because they make you select the bell and then you got to touch it again so that you get notifications. 
I think this project and this set of cylinder heads are going to be pretty interesting. So thanks for watching. Have a good weekend.